I'm gonna give you three tips on how to dry your wood quickly. No, wait, let's make it five. Oh, no, seven. If five is good, seven's better. And an extra bonus tip, it's a hidden gem on how to accelerate the drying time of your wood. Let's get at it. Tip number one. The sawdust holds moisture into the board and it can increase the odds of getting mold and mildew. And who wants all that sawdust in their workshop? Dust off all of the sawdust and debris. Tip number two. We just cut it at the sawmill. Now we need to sticker it. Let me show ya. We use these scrap pieces. You get three stickers the same size and you place them on the board. These are made out of white cedar. We haven't had any problems with leaving lines or colored or discoloring of the board from the white cedar. If you're getting value out of this video, do me a solid and clickety click my like button. Tip number three. Make sure it's flat and level and the air can flow around it. <laughs> you do not want your boards to warp, to bow, to cup, or to twist. Make sure you level it up with a level. Tip number four. So, you've got your pile of wood and you want to sticker it. But you don't have all the space. You have a tiny little space and you want it all to fit in that space. Do not, and I say do not, skimp bloop, on the thickness of your slats or your stickers. You want three quarters to an inch space between each level so that the air can flow around it. And you don't want to butt up all those boards side by side trying to get more wood in your pile because the air can't flow around that. Number five. Check your boards out. If you see any insect activity, spray it down with white vinegar. It doesn't discolor or do any damage to your wood and it is a natural insect repellent. You don't want those bugs in the house. Tip number six. On the end of the boards is where it dries the quickest. If you put the sticker roughly an inch or two towards the end. It usually only checks or splits up to the sticker. This sticker adds moisture where it's sitting and that's where it'll stop checking. Another good tip, if you don't want that end checking or splitting at the job site, you're bucking the log. We usually like ours eight foot lengths so that they're consistent and easy to pile. You can get a paintbrush an end sealer and seal the ends of the logs. Let's pretend this is my log. Andy has just cut this down. I've got my, my pail of end sealer and I'm gonna seal the end of it. Now, we don't always do this. End sealer is expensive. You can also use latex paint if you have some old latex paint. It's not as good, but hey, it's better than nothing. And as you can see, this pile, it's got nothing. If you missed, <laughs> okay. I'm not out in the bush and I am not applying end sealer. So if I've missed that, sometimes, and I mean sometimes, I go out to the mill and as the logs are being milled, I will seal them with end sealer. But let's face it, when we get busy or other circumstances we don't we don't usually use it okay do as I say not as I do I ain't doing it tip number seven is my wood dry okay when you're drying wood like my grumpy lumberjack has been doing this for over 40 years he gets a really good feeling that okay this is dry enough and he's conditioned it for the house he just has that feeling but you can use a moisture reader. A moisture reader? We don't use any meters. We just like, yeah, good, 
dry enough. If we feel like it's taking too long to dry, our friend Gary will hook us up with his kiln and we'll just shove it in the kiln for a couple weeks. And don't worry, there's no magic number out there. I need to get it down to 9% or 10%. Let it go, let go of the perfection, and just roll with it. You have to climatize the wood. So, okay, so I've got it dried. It's air dried for a year. You don't want to split or check. You want to make sure that the humidity in your house is the same as your wood and then would work with it. And then build something. Have some fun with it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for sticking right to the end for the hidden gem. You can accelerate the drying time if you dry it indoors. You can put it in your basement, your garage, or like out of the elements. We like to dry ours in the workshop. You can use a fan, a dehumidifier, to accelerate that process. It'll take you from going a year to drying out to three or four months. Depending on the moisture content you want, you don't need a kiln to dry all of your wood. We also like warm air to blow on it. So we keep our fire stoked inside the workshop. If it's cold out here, this pile right here is not drying right now. But the piles in the workshop with the fire going and a fan will dry in three to four months. Love you, bye. Did you get, did, yeah, that's good.